Philippines has no intention of rejoining the ICC. Ang hindi natin pagpabalitan sa ICC ay po issue ng soberanya. Hindi pa rin makikipagtulungan ng Pilipinas sakaling ituloy ng International Criminal Court o ICC ang kanilang investigasyon sa drug war ay kay Solicitor General Medardo Guevara. Kasunod yan ang hiling ng gobyerno sa ICC kahapon na huwag nang buksan ulit ang nakaabang investigasyon. Eh, sinasabi naman namin may investigasyon naman dito. At uh, patuloy rin naman ang investigasyon. Bakit magkakaroon ng ganon? Gipa ni Guevara, hindi pagkatake ang drug war. Isa raw itong lehitimong operasyon na nakatuon sa mga illegal na aktibidad. The Philippine government is not changing its mind about the International Criminal Court reopening the drug war probe. It is still a no, and the Office of the Solicitor General made that very clear in the comment on the ICC request. Is this the end of the line for the ICC? We discuss in this episode of The Chiefs. Welcome to this weekend edition of The Chiefs. I'm Ed Lingao. Joining us via Zoom are Ana Marie Pamento of the Philippine Star and Luci Cruz Valdez, the head of News 5. Ladies, happy weekend. Hi, not, not a happy weekend sa UK, of course. Yes. Pinag-usapan ng buong mundo ngayon. Saturated na ako sa mga detalye. No? Su super Wait, saturated na. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ito ang tunay na the crown. Ito ang yeah. tunay na the crown. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Teka, teka. Anong ano, ano ibig mong sabihin? Anong hindi tunay? <laughs> May TV show. Ano ka ba? Hindi ka nanonood. Eh. <laughs> okay. Screaming. <laughs> Flex ko talaga. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> So, you know, we, we've seen an outpouring of uh, yeah. sympathy and uh, grief all over the world. Actually, not just all over the world, eh. even in the Philippines. Kahit mga yes. Pilipino na parang, but uh, relate na relate ang ibang tao, ang ibang Pilipino doon sa ano. <laughs> eh, alam mo, sinusundan natin yung ano, no? Yung, well, siguro dahil nga, sa, royalty, mga, dahil nga sa mga The Crown, no? Yeah. So, oh. you know, natakot-takot na report about them, of course. But if you I mean, take a step... Uh, nurses doon kaya, yeah. di ba? Sikat yeah. na sikat nga mga Pinay nurses sa UK. Tsaka yeah, laging binibiro pa ni Philip noon, di ba? So, But also, eh, if you, uh, nakatanggap pa itong si Parsons, di ba? Si May Parsons, Nang, yeah. Ano, yung, Oh, but, but also, if so, you, so may affinity. Yeah, but also if you take a quick uh, step back uh, at the big picture in 1762 until 1764, we were uh, we were invaded and occupied by uh, at least Manila was uh, by the British uh, troops uh, for 20 months. Yes, Sabi Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Looking lang for connection. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a relatable yeah. connection uh, with the, with Britain. <laughs> so, yon we have yeah. that. Eh. And, huh? <laughs> and of course, we also have uh, Indai uh, developing into a severe tropical storm. Although, mukha namang hindi yeah. mag-landfall, pero buka, baka ma-apekton pa rin tayo ng kahit papano ng ulan. Within the weekend, do oh. yes. Kaya nga, hindi yeah. naman at least sa at least hindi yata tatama sa Metro Manila. Mm -hmm. Hindi maglaland. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, and the other the other issue that we also want to talk about, especially tonight, uh, will have to do with the ICC, among other things that uh, we want to talk about with uh, Solicitor General uh, Minato Guevara. But uh, we will first take a break or a, mm -hmm. a gap uh, before we go to our guest tonight. So do please stay with us. We will be right back.
Welcome back to the Chiefs here in One News. And as promised, our first guest for tonight now joins us via Zoom. Thank you for talking to us, Solicitor General Menardo Guevara uh, of the OSG. Sir, uh, welcome to the Chiefs. And uh, finally, we have you. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Luchi and Army. And I am so happy to be here with you in your program. Magandang gabi, sir. Sir, of course, we do want to talk about the ICC. It's one of the major topics uh, that, that uh, are up for discussion. But if I may, I'd just like to take a rewind uh, from a few weeks back when we had uh, uh, Justice Secretary Remulia as, uh, as, as our guest. Uh, he mentioned that there are several law enforcement officers who want to testify on uh, EJ case. Uh, uh, in fact, they do want to testify so much that uh, they, were, they were hoping to have some sort of uh, uh, witness protection for them. And I, I also understand from the discussion with uh, Remulia that he intends or he has talked to you about it uh, and that uh, you are going through the details as to how this can be done uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, could you give us an idea of the nature of, uh, of uh, these uh, these uh, supposed witnesses and what they could possibly talk about. Of course, without divulging too much, uh, because that uh, that may come up uh, later on. And uh, possibly, ang um, tinutukoy dito ni uh, Justice Secretary uh, Rimpulia ay yung possibility na uh, some elements in the in our law enforcement agencies would like to uh, find information on um, incidents na dinatawag natin EJ case or extrajudicial extra-legal killings, no? And kasi talagang yan ang problema sa mga ganyang klaseng kaso, eh. And talagang mahirap maghanap ng ebidensya. Mm -hmm. Witnesses, even yung mga families ng mga victims, ay talagang relakutan testify. So yung mga police officers ay maaaring may nalalang uh, pwedeng magbigay ng information. Kaya lamang, syempre, uh, kung yun, eh, napaka- security, kaya na mention ni uh, Secretary Rimulia na uh, siguro one way to address this issue ay uh, maamin yung batas on the witness protection program para maapasama pati mga law enforcement agents. Kasi right now ay hindi sila kasama yes, sir. sa yes, coverage sir. ng witness protection program. Yes, sir. Pero, pero, sir, have you talked to any of them? Uh, ito mga sinasabi ni Secretary Mulya. Kasi uh, with our conversation with them, eh, mukhang, uh, mukhang, uh, mukhang solid. Kasi sinasabi ni Secretary Mulya sa amin, eh, uh, mukhang raw naipit itong mga ito. Ayaw nilang, may, ayaw nilang sumama, pero naipit sila by circumstances. So, apparently, at least from uh, our discussion with them, uh, the talks have already gone uh, quite a distance uh, as to what they may be able to say. At nung time na Justice Secretary ako, ay uh, uh, wala kaming actual na usap ng uh, police officers no? na parang nag-indicate ng willingness to testify. Uh, I'm not sure about the MBI though. Kasi yun sa mga extrajudicial killing cases, uh, ay uh, uh, request namin ng MBI to help out. No? Uh, to help out yung mga special investigating teams led by DOJ prosecutors no, to uh, uh, lead in the, in the investigation of what we call the AO35 uh, cases, Administrative mm. Order number 35 cases. So, ang NBI ay a uh, very important factor dyan sa special investigating teams na yan. Kaya in the course of uh, their investigation, possibly, baka meron din silang mga nakagunayan na mga taga PNP or other law enforcement agencies na maaaring nagbigay ng clue or hint that they're willing to testify. But during my time as SOJ, I did not encounter any such offer of uh, assistance coming from the PNP itself. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, so punta na tayo dun sa main ICC issue dahil uh, sinagot ni na ninyo yun, the Philippine government, has sent a comment, no? It's a comment. It's not really, you know, hindi naman siya sagot sa isang question. So, will that stop the ICC from proceeding with its probe? Yung sagot natin, you think? Well, uh, 
kaya siya nandun sa pinatawag pretrial chamber ay dahil humihingi na authorization mm -hmm. ang prosecutor na ICC to resume yes. yung investigation in the Philippine situation. So, uh, we were invited by the comments uh, on that request ng prosecutor. So, that's what we did. And uh, after our submission, the prosecutor will be given uh, sufficient time also to address yung mga comments na raised na natin in our comment. So, uh, when everything is uh, already before the pretrial chamber, then that chamber will resolve. Kung bibigyan niya ng authorization, prosecutor to continue his investigation. Dahil uh, suspend yan eh, natigil yan uh, for a while on our request na sabi namin, teka, may investigahan na kami. We'll provide you some information regarding that. So we did. Uh, kaya natigil yan, no? But then after several months, uh, the prosecutor said he was not uh, parang this. That is fine. Sufficient effort uh, has been exerted by the Philippine government. Kaya siya humihingi ng uh, permiso ay tuloy ang kanyang investigation. So we'll find out uh, maybe after a few months kung ano magiging resolution ng retrial chamber on this matter. Sir, saan kaya ang maaring point of reconciliation between the Philippine government and the ICC prosecution as to whether the investigation uh, can be proven to be acceptable to them because they're the ones who in effect are saying that they're not satisfied with the way the, you know, the drug war cases are being handled. Uh, kayo naman, syempre, the Philippine government has been uh, trying to convince them na that yes, this is being handled by the judicial system and there is no need for any intervention on the part of ICC. Where is the point of reconciliation there? Because, uh, you know, m many wonder whether this is just a case of ICC, uh, well, playing politics with the Philippine government uh, because they do have their own politics there. And, you know, ha 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 I guess the question is, ano ba to? Political lang ba to? Are we just being singled out uh, because of the way the president, the former president, has uh, sabi na natin maligned them, you know, publicly and insulted them and has put them in a position where they feel they have to defend themselves? I mean, ganun nakakonvoluted eh. What's your take on that? Is there a point of reconciliation? Luchi, ang tingin ko dyan, no? The best way to handle the matter is really for the uh, ICC prosecutor to allow the Philippine domestic uh, proceedings to continue to, to their logical conclusion. In other words, yung uh, dahil we're doing what we need to do. Maybe at this time, hindi kayo happy doon sa suta. But this matter takes time. So uh, just push back a little. Uh, give us more time to do uh, what we need to do and we'll show you some results. I don't think that may possibility na para both of us can be uh, jointly investigating this matter. We don't think that that scenario is a possibility. Kasi mas magulo pa yun eh. Both uh, domestic uh, mechanisms in the ICC are jointly investigating. So, uh, leave us alone for now. Gagawin muna namin yung dapat ating gawin. And we'll, uh, we'll uh, show you that this investigation, if given enough time, uh, will be able to produce the results that uh, are desired by everyone concerned. Sir, we... Well, it's been... Kasi ang tagal na rin, sir, eh, no? Uh, we're talking about cases that go back uh, up till 2011 even, no? and then 2016. And so, uh, parang what have we shown them so far in terms of results proceeding from investigations and uh, from, from the mismo trial hearings? No? Uh, what, what have we accomplished back? that we can show them as evidence that this is moving. Luchi, uh, let's focus doon sa period na October. 
by the war of drugs. Uh, so that means to say July 1, 2016, okay. when the president that uh, assumed this office, no? up to uh, March of 2019. Mm -hmm. significance ng date na yon, ay yun yung date na naging effective ang ating withdrawal from the international, uh, from the ICC. No? So uh, yung period na yon, doon sinasabi na maraming namatay, uh, 4,000, 6,000 daw ang namatay. So I just want to let you know na yung mga cases na yon were automatically investigated by the PNB Internal Affairs Service. Automatic yun sa kanila pagka sa kanilang operations ay merong na-injure or may namatay. Ngayon, doon sa kanilang investigations na yon ang lumilitaw, no, based yun sa report nila sa amin, ang majority naman ay uh, maayos ang team conduct operations bagamat merong mga namatay, no? Pero, there were a uh, so, na merong findings ang PNP, IAS, na may pagkukula ang kanila mga enforcement agents to the point na parang uh, merong uh, parang willful intent to kill, no? Mm. So, yan yung more than 50 cases that were turned over to the DOJ by the PNP. So, hindi, hindi may big sabihin na doon lang magtatapos yun sa more than 50 cases na yun, no? Actually, hundreds of police officers ang involved dyan sa 52 cases na yan. So, nirefer namin yan sa NBI for case build-up. And the NBI of the 52 cases referred to them, ay uh, 19 had already been resolved. Some were filed with the DOJ for preliminary investigation, and a few were uh, filed in court for uh, trial, no? Uh, several police officers had been indicted in court already. Now, as to the other uh, thousands of uh, remaining uh, cases na nakalusot, so to speak, no, sa uh, internal affairs service ng BNP, hindi naman doon nakakusyon eh. Dahil babalikan ng DOJ yun. Uh, the DOJ has uh, requested the NBI and uh, very closely with the BNP. As a matter of fact, the NBI and the BNP have uh, agreed, no? they have signed a, a memorandum of agreement para pagtulungan nilang balikan yung mga other cases where majority of the police officers involved in illegal drug operations were exonerated. So, uh, pagka-inuna lang yung more than 50 cases na talagang merong nakita, pati yung mismo PNP, no? na shortcomings or uh, abuse or excess uh, use of excessive force by the PNP. So, continuing naman yan. At meron din mga cases na na-file directly sa office of the Ombudsman. So, all of these are actually uh, happening except that uh, hindi naman kasi ganun kabilis na mag-convict ka. Eh. Kung meron mga uh, complaint na final, let's say today, haba-haba rin yung process na i-undergo yung, uh, yan, no? yung kaso na yan hanggang sa magkaroon decision ang trial court. Plus the fact that Gucci, nang nagihirapan doon pa lang sa gathering ng evidence ng ating investigators. Kasi uh, it's fairly understandable that the respondents ay yung mga law enforcement agents themselves. So may, medyo mayroong fear of the part of witnesses to come out. Even yung, yung families ng victims, meron din silang hesitation. Kaya talaga it's difficult to investigate into mga ganitong classing cases. Yung AO35 cases, ang dami rin yan. May mga na-solve, pero yung karamihan talaga uh, nandiyan sa uh, back burner. Kasi ang walang pipili itong natestigo para kalungan yung mga investigators. So, uh, ang punto dito, Luchi, ginagawa naman yung mga dapat pipin. Kaya, kaya nga lamang yung resulta ay hindi kumbaga pa masasabi natin na uh, good enough no, para satisfy yung mga human rights critics. Kasi ang lahat nila ay more convictions and so forth and so on. But that will take time to uh, accomplish. Kaya ang mga lang ay ginagawa yung pupiling gawin. At yan okay. investigation na yan, yung prosecution, ay genuine. Hindi naman yan para ginagawa para Yes, sir.
Sir, 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 if you don't mind, sir, ano, uh, could we just take a quick break? Because we'd like to fix the, uh, we'd like to fix our audio. Uh, medyo mahirap po maintindihan ng ilang portions ng siya sabi niyo. Sayang, sayang naman po kasi yung siya sabi niyo. Eh. Uh, medyo, medyo uh, very tiny yung audio. So we would oh, like to take a quick break while we try to fix the audio. Thank you, sir. Okay. Sorry about that. We will be right back.
Welcome back to Chiefs on One News. We continue our conversation with Solicitor General Minardo Guevara. Sir, welcome back to Chiefs and uh, we apologize for the delay. No problem. You and sir, that's much better. <laughs> sir, oh, well, of course, we, we do understand what you were trying to say, Karina. Uh, uh, as far as government is concerned, ginagawa na po yung lahat uh, to investigate uh, all these uh, reports uh, uh, of apparently uh, excessive use of force by some uh, uh, local, uh, uh, sorry, by some law enforcement uh, officers. However, is it also possible that, uh, uh, that the use of excessive force in these cases could have been spurred by uh, the president's words and declarations in the last six years. And we do remember the president uh, uh, making all these, uh, these, these heated declarations uh, in the drug war. Uh, and some would, may, perhaps some would even say na, na baka may parallel dun sa, ano, sa nangyari dun sa Rwanda where the killings in Rwanda were, were spurred by, uh, by hate speech uh, between the Hutus and the Tutsis. Of course, different degrees. Clearly different degrees, but uh, in the same manner, na, ano, uh, very heated words uh, to spur some people into action. Ed, uh, several times naman na pinaliwanag ng Presidente no, what he actually meant pag sinasabi niya na, uh, you know, yung parang words to the effect na necessary you kill them or you shoot them. Yan naman ay pinaliwanag niya no? at sinasabi naman niya na ang intensyon niya really is uh, para takutin no? yung mga dapat matakot sa mga law enforcement agents. Pero uh, with respect to his uh, directive sa mga police officers, sinabi naman niya na uh, you, you act within the bounds of the law but if you find your uh, personal security at risk or in danger, then uh, exert the necessary effort or uh, force para ma-repel yung ganyang threat to your per to your own personal security. Kaya whether you know whether or not uh, naka-contribute ba yung ganung klasing pananalita ng presidente sa pagiging uh, parang sa aggressiveness ng ating mga law enforcement agents. I can only speculate or we can only speculate mm -hmm. about that. Siguro depende kung ano yung actual uh, 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 incident happening on the ground. Hindi naman natin ma-generalize na kaya maraming namatay ay dahil doon sa sinasabi ng Presidente na gawin nyo kung ano yung nararapat uh, pagka kayo nalagay sa alanganin. It is also possible na talaga maraming uh, namatay or napatay dahil yun ang uh, called for by the situation. Baka talaga namang merong mga encounters. Baka talaga namang merong mga suspects na mayroong uh, mga firearms na maaaring gamitin against the police officers. At maaari rin naman na talagang mayroong situation na excessive on the ang force na ginamit ng police officers. At yun ang ating iniimbestigahan. That's what we're trying to figure out. Alin dyan sa mga uh, numerous incidents na yan, ang talagang masasabi natin na uh, lawful yung, uh, yung pagkamatay ng tao at alin yung intentional killing which was not called for by the situation. Yun ang investiga natin precisely. So, attorney, you are completely ruling out na merong na-commit na crime against humanity. Kasi yun ang sinasabi ng mga human rights groups eh. Nag-iimbestiga nag tayo ngayon for EJ case or murder pero wala daw initiation of uh, effort para mag-investiga for a crime against humanity, for murder, yun yung iniimbestiga ng ICC, di ba? Meron naman tayong batas na, I know, from the 1990s, yung Republic Act, no? Crimes Against Humanity, kasama dun yung mga murder rate, ganon ganon. Pero, uh, did you ever consider na mag-initiate mag nga ng along that line? Yung crimes, murder committed in uh, as part of a crime against humanity. Completely ruled out na ba yan? Kasi yun ang sinasabi nila na yun ang gusto daw ng ICC, although uh, hindi naman yung spokesman yung ICC yung kautam namin, pero yun ang sinasabi ng human rights groups. Uh, Ami, yun nga yung isa sa objections na sinait ng Philippine government doon sa uh, comment na sinabit natin sa ICC pre-trial chamber, no? Na walang jurisdiction ang ICC over the situation in the Philippines. Kasi yung Rome Statute ang binibigay na jurisdiction sa International Criminal Court ay jurisdiction over four types of crime only. Mm -hmm. 
like mm -hmm. uh, uh, genocide, mm -hmm. uh, crime of aggression, war crimes, and then yung crimes against humanity. So obviously, hindi naman papasok yung situation in the Philippines doon sa genocide or doon sa war crimes or doon sa crime of aggression. Kaya ang tinitingnan, baka doon papasok sa crime against humanity. But even then, ang sinasabi ng, uh, ng Philippine government, hindi rin siya pumapasok doon sa crime against humanity. Kasi yung crime against humanity, kahit na may kasamang murder, multiple oh. murder, etc., mga kasamahan niya na crimes under uh, that general category of crimes against humanity, mm -hmm. mga, ano eh, mga stuff like extermination, enslavement, yes. o kaya persecution on account of political, ethnic, racial, mm -hmm. cultural, gender, etc. factors. No? Yan ang mga kasamahan niyan dyan sa category ng crimes, crimes against humanity. And all as part of a systematic attack against the, yes. against the civilian population pursuant to a state or organizational policy. Eh, hindi naman ganun. Kasi hindi naman yan a systematic attack against the civilian population. It's hmm. an attack against unlawful activities. More particularly, itong mga crimes perpetrated by, uh, you, you know, yung mga drug-related offenses. Yes. Ito na ang ating attack. Hindi siya attack against a particular segment of the population on account of uh, ethnicity, race, uh, political inclinations, etc., etc. That's what that's what we're saying. Kaya itong situation na to is not one of those contemplated under the definition of crimes against humanity sa Rome Statute. At mm -hmm. wala, wala ka makikita na any uh, state uh, policy or organizational policy na nagsasanction na mga acts that would constitute a crime against humanity in the context of the Rome Statute creating the International Criminal Court. Kahit dun sa batas natin, sir, kasi sinasabi nila, yung mga namatay kasi puro suspect eh. Hindi ba, will that carry any weight dun sa issue na yan, sa, sa question na yan? Tsaka, sir, yung ano, if I may, no, yung, yung ano eh, yung nanlaban. The fact na paulit-ulit yung, uh, yung kaso ng nanlaban. Umano, parang hindi kaya yun ang uh, nag-insight sa kanila to think that there's a systematic uh, intent to eliminate uh, those suspects. That's a possibility, Luchi. Kaya na-sort out na nga yan initially no, by the IAS. Na-identify na nga eh, yung mga kaso na parang lumilitaw na willful or intentional yung killing. But that's not to say na yung 6,000 cases na yon, ay rather 6,000 casualties na yon, ay uh, dahil uh, 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 we're on account of yung theory na nanlaban lahat yan. Wala hmm. namang uh, pruweba na ganun yan eh. Ganun karami yung namatay. Pero hindi ibig sabihin na lahat sa mga kasong na yan ay mga nanlaban cases na talagang parang masasabi natin na ah, wala, talagang merong intention na lipulin lipunin lahat siyang mga drug addicts na yan. Hindi naman ganun eh. Karamihan niya sa initial na assessment ng TNT IAS ay uh, maayos naman yung mga nangyari. At kung sakali mang na, na, may namatay, quite unfortunately, ay incidental lang yun doon sa pag-conduct pag ng kanilang operations. Eh, how do we know na talagang lumaban? How do we know na talagang may armas yung mga suspects na na they were trying to apprehend. Eh, hindi naman natin alam din lahat yun. We're also, we're only speculating na libo-libo yung mga nanlaban cases. For, for all we know, baka karamihan yan talaga na magkamatay dahil uh, uh, called for by the situation. Dahil baka nalagay din sa danger ang buhay ng ating mga police officers. So, nandun din yung possibility na yun eh. Kaya yun mm -hmm. na nga na investigahan. Sir, in, uh, in September of 2018, the president uh, made the statement, uh, what is my sin? Did I steal even one peso? Did I prosecute somebody who I ordered jailed? My sin is extrajudicial killings. 
uh, that among many statements the president uh, made in the last six years that, uh, that uh, are, are quite heated and uh, that do raise some questions. And I suppose, uh, especially for, for foreigners, uh, would raise a lot of questions about whether or not uh, there was some sort of policy, whether uh, written or not, uh, uh, may not matter to them. Uh, another case, for example, where he said, uh, tell the soldiers there's a new order coming from the mayor, uh, referring to himself, we will not kill you, we'll just shoot your vagina so that if there is no vagina, it will be, it will be useless. Uh, these statements, I, I know uh, over the years, uh, Malacanang has said that these are probably exaggerations of the president. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, doesn't this also open the president to uh, a lot of questions about whether or not uh, there was really, uh, there were really words that, that, that could have spurred people to go further than they, than they should have? Well, uh, Ed, uh, I understand that talagang. On certain occasions, I mean, as Sabia, no, the president uh, said something like that. But uh, we have to counterbalance that with other statements that he made on other occasions. No, na, na kinaklarify naman niya what he really meant. Eh, alam naman natin yan na uh, ganun class, ganun, ganun kung magsalita ang presidente natin, ano? Hindi naman siya very, very diplomatic as we have known him. So uh, talagang uh, kuminsan, kung papakinggan mo lang yung talagang sinasabi niya, you may get the wrong impression. But uh, as I explained earlier, eh, meron din naman mga occasions that he explained himself. Uh, when uh, you know he used uh, language which was more sober, ay sinasabi naman niya na uh, all law enforcement agents should act within the bounds of the law and use force only when you find it necessary kung iyong sariling personal safety are in danger. So yun naman ay pinapaliwanag niya rin. Kaya while it is true na meron siya mga sinasabi na ganyang statements that might have spurred yung mga law enforcement agents to be, you know, to be more aggressive, inabalance din naman yan by more sober statements on other occasions. So we should understand where the president was coming from, no? Talagang... He wanted to parang so terror on the part of this uh, 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 illegal drug traders and traffickers. That's why ganun siya magsalita. But he corrected himself many times also, or rather clarified himself many times. Attorney, apart from the ICC, mga human rights groups are asking the United Nations Human Rights Council to investigate the human rights situation in the Philippines. Hanggang ngayon nga, hanggang until this new administration down, na mga abuses being committed. What do you say to that suggestion? Uh, well, meron ang actual uh, mechanism na gumagawa niya, no? na mention <laughs> yung uh, Administrative Order 35 uh, Committee, the Agency Committee on Extraditional Killings, Torture, and Forced Disappearance, <laughs> and other uh, grave violations of human rights, no? So that has been in existence, I think, since uh, 2012. At siya naman until now ay continuing sa kanilang trabaho. But uh, as I also mentioned, ay na, talagang medyo uh, kakaunti lang ang nasosolve niyang AO35 committee na yan, no? Through its uh, numerous special investigating teams because of <coughs> difficulty in gathering information and evidence. Nakikipagtulungan din yan with the Commission on Human Rights. Uh, as far as I know, when I, during the time when I was Secretary of Justice, I made it a point to consult with the uh, CHR from time to time kasi alam namin na nilalapitan sila eh, na mga pamilya ng mga victims. So uh, we uh, got information also from the CHR. Kaya lamang ay uh, considering the number of mga cases like this, ay uh, hindi naman talaga masold lahat yan dahil nga takakulangan ng ebidensya. So uh, even then on the human rights situation, uh, meron tayong ginagawa. Meron tayong program with the United Nations, no? a joint program on technical cooperation. Yes. Uh, and protection of human rights. It's a three-year program, which is uh, on its second year, if I'm not mistaken. Kaya yung mga ganyang klaseng... Uh, arrangements even with the United Nations would can show na binibigyan natin ng importansya ang pag-respect sa human rights in our country. Otherwise, why do we bother? Why do we enter into this kind of agreements with the United Nations? Why do we bother 
uh, creating interagency committees to deal with the matter. Hindi eh, naman ito parang moro-moro lang o nagpapalabas ka lama. Okay. Um, Solicitor General Minardo Guevara, sir, thank you very much for joining us tonight. It's really, a, it's really a pleasure to have you on board. We also hope to have you again <laughs> very, uh, uh, very soon. Again and again. Again and again. <laughs> thank you, Soljen. <laughs> thank you, Soljen. <laughs> Ingat, sir. Salamat po. Maraming salamat. Okay. Night. Happy weekend. Happy weekend, sir. Happy weekend. We are Bye. starting up another conversation right after this break, so please stay with us. The United Kingdom's longest-serving monarch, Queen Elizabeth II, has died at the age of 96. Daan-daang Briton ang dumagsa sa labas ng Buckingham Palace sa United Kingdom, kasunod ng pagpanaw ni Queen Elizabeth II. still watching the Chiefs today. The world mourns the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. What does this mean for the world and even for the Philippines? Now sharing his insights with us is Manuel Enverga, the third of Ateneo de Manila's European Studies program. Sir, magandang gabi and uh, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the Chiefs. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Yes, sir. Magkasama tayo rin sa kabilang programa. Yes. Sir, well, uh, of course, uh, uh, it's been a while since we've had uh, any sort of royalty in this country. I mean, pre-Hispanic pa siguro. Uh, of course, then again, uh, some people believe in Italiano. <laughs> but uh, let me ask you this. Uh, I, I, I imagine a lot of people cannot imagine uh, what, what it means to have royalty, especially royalty that is... Uh, revered, uh, but does not really have any direct power over you. Uh, how do you explain uh, the concept of British royalty to Filipinos? Sure. Uh, actually, it's uh it's something that that we that's quite foreign to us because uh, the European system is uh, in the European system they usually divide the executive so that one one person is sort of the head of state they symbolize the unity of the country and uh, their job is to sort of um, be the best role models and also to avoid scandal the the other the other side the one who runs the government. Uh, that is the one who can make mistakes and yeah. therefore is prone to scandal. So Parliament, even if, the prime minister and all that. Uh. Yeah, the prime minister, exactly. So if the prime minister makes mistakes or or becomes uh, or divides the society, at least the unity is preserved. So I think what's useful for Filipinos uh, like us to understand is um, in this system, uh, you at least have a unifying factor uh, that does not that avoids uh, controversy, that avoids, um, that, that, that keeps the country together. And then on the other side, you have the more controversial side uh, where, you know, people can fight, society could divide. Uh, and, and so 
in that way, despite the divisions, there is still an element of, of unity. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's, um, that's something that, that could be useful uh, in, in any society, to have a unifying symbol or unifying factor. Okay, but given that the, that the British monarch, Queen Elizabeth, really is not a political figure, mm. and uh, she's very careful not to be perceived as having influenced any policy politically, no? moral sway shown ang kanya, di ba? Uh, what will be the effect of her death on, well, the United Kingdom vis-a-vis -vis the rest of Europe and yeah. as well for the rest of the world at this point in yeah. history? Yeah, I, I think there, there's a number of uh, since since her authority is moral. It's um, the, the 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 one of the terms that that uh, academics like myself like to use is is influence or soft power. So uh, as a symbolic figure, um, this means quite a lot. Uh, as people people talk about the end of an era because um, we were used to thinking of. Queen Elizabeth II being the, rep the key representative of the United Kingdom. Uh, but now uh, we're, we're going to have to change that. And uh, some simple symbolic uh, things that, that we will see change. In fact, uh, a while ago in the, in the intro video for, for our segment, uh, we heard the singing of God Save the King. God Save the Queen, yes. Yeah, so it, it, oh, yeah. They, changed, they, they changed the term already. So oh. you're, starting to he you're starting to see this societal transformation. Um, but for the rest of us, the rest of the world, I think it's important also that to, to realize that the office of, of the British royal um, or the British head of state, the king, um, in this case, is, is, mm -hmm. um, is, is one of the sort of chief representatives or chief diplomats of, of still one of the most significant countries in the world. So yeah. whenever our our leader would visit the UK, uh, the person that, that would greet them would be uh, now the king um, mm. and any head of state, in fact. So uh, I think that that could also be, we should also consider the fact that, you know, in the past, maybe now King Charles may have done or said things that that mm -hmm. may not have looked so good to other uh, to right. to other world leaders, but he is now the king, and oh. so they have to find a way to to sort of adjust and work together. Hello. Oh, for one, you know, the queen ngayon consort na no. Yeah. Tapos divorce siya. Tapos yung anak niya rebelde si Harry. I mean, ibang iba na yung complexion ng royal family. So yeah. Anyway, Ami, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, Elizabeth was seen as a stabilizing factor in the UK, no. What do you say? Of course, binanggit na nga ni Lucy, Charles has been and Camilla, of course, have been very controversial. I guess ganyan yung kultura natin ngayon, eh. New generation, ayan eh. No. So, do you see King Charles the Third? Right. Um, it's so he he is um, King Charles the Third, and yes, he he is controversial because of his background, right? We we, we know of uh, his relationship, the, the what happened with the first marriage with uh, the former Lady Diana, uh, Princess of Wales, the former Princess of Wales, um, but. I think also it's important to realize in perspective that maybe he is controversial now, but also there were much more controversial monarchs that came before him. Uh, mm -hmm. So Edward, uh, Andrew. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. Edward, Andrew, or even if you go further, uh, Henry, there's like Henry VIII. Henry with the, yeah, Henry VIII. <laughs> or, or, like you said, Charles I and Charles II. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, right. And and also yes, the, the first two King Charleses actually, <laughs> so he is actually joining a legacy of very uh, kings with a controversial name. Let's let's see if he will be controversial also, or if he will break the break that line, break the pattern. Old. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, uh, he's coming into into uh, well, he's ascending to the throne at a time when there's a lot of talk about uh, members of the Commonwealth breaking away. Yeah. Ang problema. So can he keep the Commonwealth together? Mm. You know, my speculation ngayon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's 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 a worthwhile thing to think about. I think um, there's two things to to consider. So the Commonwealth itself, it seems quite strong and solid. Not not so much because of the monarch, but also because 
the 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 the, the Commonwealth itself stands for something. Um, now membership means that membership to the Commonwealth means that you're a stable democracy that stands for human rights and and things like that. So that's what they hold on to. Um, whether or not the king or queen is important, I think is secondary. Um, and so. Yes, there are countries like in the Caribbean where they're they're removing the the, the king or queen as head of state, um, but they're not leaving the Commonwealth. They're they're just changing their 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 head of state, which you know it um, it means that the yes the the monarch has you know is maybe insignificant. It may be less significant now uh, to some countries, but. Um, the Commonwealth is still there, so we can separate those two issues in a way. Um, the other thing I think useful to think about is the um, the, the monarch in the UK. So would would King Charles be uh, would would the would the monarchy remain in in the UK itself? And based on the latest surveys I've seen, I think it's about uh, twenty percent of people want to abolish the monarchy. So that there's still. Right majority mm -hmm. that wants to keep it. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, but uh, talagang more and more, no, uh, the relevance of yeah. the monarchy is being questioned. Uh, and, and to think that it's one of the most costly overheads of the UK, no? Uh, yeah. do, you, do, you, do you see Charles entering into a, an era where it will be seriously questioned? I think you figure small, uh, not 20%. Uh, that that is probably a reflection of the fact that Queen Elizabeth was so revered and so loved, no? Yeah. Which may not be the case for King Charles. True. Uh, do you do you do you see the monarchy actually breaking up uh, mm. uh, in his term, or if not in William's term? I well, based on so he, I think he has the momentum to keep the monarchy going. So he has that advantage. Um, one one uh, factor that I am considering, though, is that um, the well, he has actually said this. Um, it's not so much that the monarchy would disappear. Maybe he is doing this in reaction to that. He he's actually he actually has plans to sort of. The, the term is streamlined. So he's going to make the number of senior royals smaller. And these, these are the royals that receive funding from taxpayers. So that means mm -hmm. less of his relatives will get mm -hmm. uh, public funds. So that may be one compromise here to keep the monarchy going. Um, there's also, if I'm not mistaken, he also has plans to uh, increase the 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 number of tourists that can come to to the royal residences so it becomes oh. sort of a money making uh they, they increase their money making potential and and maybe in that way commercial it, na. commercial exactly one of the yes. biggest tourists. Oh, oh. It's true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Sir, well, you, you might say, I suppose, that, uh, no, that, that uh, the royalty is the glue that holds the culture and the community together. However, like, like Luci was saying earlier, it is pretty expensive glue. And there are assets which are, which are not taxed. Uh, I, I think uh, the, queen has, uh, the late queen has, uh, what, half a billion dollars in assets. Uh, and also that's not tax. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering lang if, if, if in the end, uh, there, there could also come a point where people would say, could say, uh, or members of the Commonwealth could say that, uh, is it worth it uh, to, to, to keep up with this upkeep? Uh, yeah. Not like other royals in Europe where uh, the upkeep doesn't seem to be as, as much, but they're mm -hmm. also well respected. Yeah, true. Um, and it, it's... I, I'm not sure if the the Commonwealth members actually pay for the um, for the upkeep of the royals, but but definitely the British taxpayers do. Um, there, this is actually something that's been debated for a very long time already. Uh, so on both, there there are two sides to that. There are those who say it's very expensive glue. Um, so yes, that's true. It's expensive glue. Um, but at the same time, the the other side is sort of the the money-making potential, the tourist draw, but also the, on top of that, there's the sort of um, 
the the sense of the, the term that they use is majesty. Mm. So the unquantifiable. The idea that, mm. that they're they're up there, but they're also reachable. Um, the majesty can be quite expensive, but it's part of the tradition of, of, of British royalty. I think m more so than other uh, European royals. Mm. Well, yeah, they are the most popular royals, I have to say. I mean, but sir, let me go back to a question I asked you in the earlier program. Uh, di ba, pa parang sumanga yung yung uh, yung pinuntahan ng royalty ng Britain versus yung royalty ng ng, ng Europe. Uh, uh, you have uh, royalty in Europe where mas 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 uh, parang ordinary tao yung royalty, uh, yeah. but you still have the the British royals. What happened there? Pa parang sila nagsanga. And uh, yeah, yeah. and how I mean how how do you look at them? Uh, their differences, their pros and their cons. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's important also to realize that maybe the traditions uh, or the expectations of royalty are quite different uh, in, in in different countries. So um, one one of the most uh, some some very reachable in a way to to use the term right some very um close to the people kinds of royals are the the ones you'd find in say the nordic countries so uh say norway or sweden or even the the royals of um of the netherlands right who are who are famous for riding bikes around and they mm -hmm. can be seen um everywhere um i think the this goes back sort of also to their the, the expectations of what it means to be royalty. So in those countries, the sense of majesty, the need for the royals to be really majestic, like really um, to, to show wealth, to show power, uh, that sort of disappeared in their tradition. So uh, in Norway, I believe they, they talk about how the the royal, like the the king or queen, I'm not sure if it's a king or queen right now, they they... They work in the palace, but they live in a house. So it's like, it's a job that they do. They inherited that job. They will do the job, but um, they, they, they're just normal people like everyone else. Or I think another good example also is um, the Dutch king, who um, I think until until very recently, he was he was known to actually be a co-pilot in in KLM flights in in the the yeah so he had a real um, job. he would he would do that and <laughs> and no one no one would really notice him uh, and he would he would just go ahead and do that. This is not something you would hear about among the British royals. Right? Um, so okay, there is a difference. Uh, <laughs> uh, the king flew me around. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh, Professor Manuel Enverga of the European Studies uh, Program of the Ateneo de Manila University, sir. Maraming salamat for joining us tonight and uh, ingat po parate. Thank you so much. Have a good Thank weekend. Thank you, bro. Have a good weekend, sir. Happy weekend. And that's it for the Chiefs. We hope as we discuss here, we'll keep the conversation going. I'm Edling Gao. I'm Mami Pamintuan of the Philippine Star. I'm Luchi Cruz Valdez of News 5. We are One News, all sides, all the time.